I have been learning a ton about underwater photography lately. Last year, I went to the Bahamas and photographed some models. I tried my hand at surf photography, and I also swam with sharks to photograph them. After trying all of those things, I really, really enjoy shooting with wildlife. So when I got the opportunity to go to Mexico and photograph slash film striped marlin while they go and eat their little sardine bait balls, I was pretty excited to say yes. Balls, fun fact, are just a bunch of sardines that are together and then the striped marlin, they go in and they like, you know, get them. After a very long travel day that included a couple flights, a very long car drive, and a somewhat sketchy 11 p.m. boat ride, I made it to the island that I was staying on in Magdalena Bay. Welcome to Mexico. Very important not to put yourself in questionable positions. I was traveling alone, and I didn't know that we were going to be hopping on a boat basically at midnight with no whereabouts of my surroundings in a country that I don't speak the language. Hindsight is 2020. I will learn more about the travel route. I felt safe enough to not go, wait a second guys, we need to not do this right now and get a hotel. I felt confident enough to go on the boat ride. I'm just saying hindsight, I would have loved to know more about the midnight boat ride. I am in Mexico today. James is home holding down the fort of the business. For the next few days, I am going to be shooting wildlife again. This time, instead of sharks, it's going to be documenting striped marlin on their, like, they're hunting these big bait balls of salmon. Not salmon. What? <laughs> this will be, I wouldn't say my first forte, but this is like full days on the water, no distractions, not like, not thinking about business, just completely focused in on figuring out what the heck I'm doing in the water. So I'm honestly really, really excited. The first day in Mexico was amazing. Everyone except for myself and the host canceled their trip because of COVID. It was just me and the three hosts, Christina, I met her shark diving, Jeff, who was Christina's boyfriend and the videographer, and then there was Jono, Jeff's friend. He was hilarious and he is such a fantastic underwater photographer. The challenge on this trip for me was very simple. All I had to do was keep up. The first day on the water was unbelievably rocky and I got so seasick. I've never been truly seasick and I think this was the first time that I, that I, oof, I didn't throw up, but everything in my body wanted to and my body just wouldn't let me. The first couple of drops with the dolphins was fun. Very high pace, which I didn't expect it to be so high intensity, but that was really exciting. And um, now I'm seasick. <laughs> I've been planning the departure of what may happen. So I've been sitting in the back of the boat, which doesn't necessarily help with the fumes, but we're having some egg burritos for lunch. Honestly, I'm just ready to skew and just get it over with. It was pretty miserable, but I had to keep up regardless. And whenever there were animals in the water that we spotted, I hopped in. The coolest thing that we saw that first day was a massive school of mobula rays. <laughs> Mobulas not only glide through the water, but they can leap a little over six feet out of the water, which is pretty insane. As I was swimming with them, I thought it was really, really amazing how they were all in sync together. I believe there's an actual term for that. Birds do the same thing where they're like, you know, in sync. It was really, really cool to see. Really quick before we get into my favorite part of the trip 
If you are enjoying the video, give it a like and drop a comment below if you would be interested in going on a trip like this. The extrovert in me always wants to know who my future travel friends are because I can't drag James on every single trip I go on. So yeah, comment below if a trip like this would be of interest to you. This right here is my sleeping area. One important note when on a trip like this is to fix your bed every single day. Number one is because the area is so small, so it's obviously a little bit less chaotic when the bed is clean. And number two is no critters can get underneath your sheets without you seeing them. This side has all of my gear. I was lucky enough to have my own glamping tent. I don't have to share with anybody, so I'm able to kind of lay stuff out the way that I like. Now let's talk about the sea lions. This part of the trip was so fun for me. We pulled into a cove where there were hundreds of sea lions either laying on the rocks, chilling out, playing in the water. A lot of them apparently were really young, so they had a ton of energy and they were just kind of swimming around. We spent about two hours at this location and it took me a little bit of time to kind of warm up and understand the body language of what the sea lions were doing because they would go from the bottom, which was probably like 30 feet, not too deep. They'd go for the bottom and then zoom right back up and zoom straight into the camera and it freaked me out. I thought that they wanted me out of their space and I was so prepared to respect their boundaries and dip, but the other photographers that were in the water with me assured me these are young sea lions. They're just playing around. It's kind of scary to interact with a wild animal while you are not in your element. You are completely in their element and blowing bubbles. Freaked me out, but we spent some time there and it was really, really fun. I got to play around with just snapping loads of photos. I mean, I got so many photos of those sea lions. I got some videos of them. They were just playing with each other. It was fantastic. Definitely a highlight of the trip for me. Because we were staying on an island that was fairly secluded off of the Baja Peninsula, um, we had very minimal electricity. There was only like one spot that had running electricity. I think that they were using generators. The tents didn't have any electricity, but honestly it was kind of nice. There was minimal reception, so every now and then I can kind of touch back in to make sure James was alive, but I didn't really spend very much time on social media. It allowed me to really think about what I was doing and not compare myself to other people's work. I really was able to completely focus in on what I was capturing. And I think that's a, I think that's something that I need to probably take note of more often. is how I spent my roughly four days or 96 hours in Mexico. We actually didn't end up finding many marlin. We found one really solid bait ball and I think I maybe photographed very poorly one striped marlin. So that part of the trip was not as much of a success, but everything surrounding that was a screaming success in my opinion. Mexico was beautiful, the people were amazing, and this migration happens every fall, so I know that I'll have another chance at it. So with that said, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Yeah.